What's up guys, I'm James and welcome to Boot Wizard Boot Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the New Balance Furon V6. We're going to take a look at what makes up this brand new boot from New Balance, including its fancy new knitted upper, its brand new sole plate, and we're going to find out if this is worth your money, and not only that, how does it compare? to all of the other speed boots out there. Are you really gonna pick this up instead of picking up something like a Mercurial or even an X? The previous Furon V5 is good, but it's certainly not in that league and not able to compete with the big boys. So let's find out if the V6 has managed to do it. Remember to like the video, remember to get subscribed, and let's do this. So we're going to kick off with the thing that is going to grab all the headlines and it is the upper. And the reason it's the big attention grabber is because the upper is now knitted. This is New Balance's first ever knitted upper and I see why they've done it. The knitted upper is in vogue, it's in demand, it's what everybody wants. But that doesn't mean that the knitted upper is always good. So the upper we can look at from two distinct points of view. The knit itself, which is this fit weave upper, which makes up the whole boot. It's incredibly soft, it's going to require next to no break in time, and it's a really premium feeling knit. The two colours that you can see in the design are also two different types of knit within the fit weave, kind of two knit patterns. The base red, which is a very dense, very standard knit, and then a much more open weave, which you get in this burgundy pattern, which runs in the diamonds. Now these are raised off the boot and give you a textured feeling on the ball. So they're actually little bumps that run all the way down the boot. Now these little raised bumps, which you definitely feel when you're on your hand over the boot, along with a protective coating, which runs all the way around the boot here, provide you with a little bit of extra grip and a little bit of extra texture and touch on the ball. It's nothing groundbreaking and it's not going to do a huge amount, but it is definitely there comparison to draw is that it's definitely not as textured or as grippy as what you're going to find on the Puma Future 5.1, but it shares a very similar way of design by having that textured and coated area covering some of the knit and then another area which has completely exposed fit weave. So do be aware in adverse weather that may not respond so well. Now we also have to look at this from the point of view of a speed boot. So it has this incredibly soft fit weave upper, which is really, really nice. However, it's a speed boot, so we want a barefoot touch. But in order to give this fit weave a structure and make it responsive, which it is, it's a very responsive boot with great lockdown, much better lockdown than you would have found on the previous version because of a deeper lacing system on this one. In order to give it that structure, it has quite a thick liner and the knit itself is much thicker than anything you're going to find on something like a Mercurial. So that means you don't really get that pingy barefoot speed boot sensation. You get more of a slightly padded, slightly textured sensation. That's not a bad thing at all, it's just a matter of preference. Maybe you want a speed boot, a lightweight boot with an aggressive outsole that doesn't have a crazy barefoot touch on the ball. Maybe you want a little bit of extra texturing. Maybe you're looking at something like a Phantom Venom, but you want something that's a little bit different. This might be a better suited option in that category instead of a comparison to the Vapor. So while the Furon is a speed boot, I also think because of the texturing, the touch on the ball and the way it performs, it also falls itself into that category that the Venom holds as a little bit of a striker's boot as well. 
other things to note, while this is a one piece upper construction, they've actually kept a very similar idea to what they did with the Furon V5 here, because it's two different materials, two different knits that have been fused together. So you have this knit that runs through the central portion and then flows into the back of the boot. This is all knit, but that bright red, bright crimson knit that runs from there into the central lacing system here is then fused to the outer knit. So it is two pieces, but you don't notice it, and it gives you a really good, really true one piece upper sensation, very similar to what they did with the V5. That secondary knit down the middle of the boot is perforated. It has little rips in it to allow it to stretch out so it's easier to get your foot in. And then that leads through into this little stretchy collar area here, which does nothing. It's just there for looks. I don't have a problem with it. It doesn't get in my way, but it's purely aesthetic. So we'll take a look at the appearance of this one. On the whole, I think a really nice looking boot, a great launch colorway, a general great looking silhouette, the patterning that fades out in those diamond shapes all looks fantastic. The sole plate's great, it's a wearable finish up the front. I don't really have any complaints at all. If you want to check out the full unboxing where we really break down what this looks like, then click the link up in the corner and that'll take you through to my unboxing. But I really am a fan of the appearance of this one. Great looking boot. Flipping the boot onto what I think is about to become the unsung hero of the New Balance line, the sole plate on this Furon V6. You can see from the shape of the studs, these mini chevrons, it definitely is reminiscent of what you get on the Adidas X line. Similar stud shape, almost identical stud pattern, but I think I actually prefer what is on the Furon. The X has the speed frame, the old sprint frame, which has been a staple for Adidas for years for good reason. This is excellent. The Furon has that very same stiff and responsive midfoot and heel area. It's really good. It's really adding a lot of support in there. And I do think makes the boot feel more aggressive and more responsive. And then the, the king of this, how snappy this is. That is a snappy, snappy forefoot. I am really enjoying how aggressive that is. And then not only that, we're combining it with a more aggressive stud pattern than you get from the X. So these chevrons are actually just that little bit longer, just that little bit wider, and they do give you slightly better traction in the ground. And honestly, it's fantastic. All right, let's do weight. Another area where the Furon V5 kind of was a little bit of a letdown because it was kind of on the heavy side for a speed boot, 212 grams, but honestly, it's not a big deal. It's not that heavy at all. So comparing that up with the current X line, bear in mind these have been pretty heavily worn. X19.1, 196 grams. And then also the Superfly 7, 198 grams. And then we're gonna throw on the scale the brand new Furon V6. 183 grams. That is lighter than the X, than the Mercurial, than its predecessor. There are very few boots out there with knitted uppers, with any uppers, that are this light. For a speed boot, that is a very light boot. For any boot, that is a very light boot. So let's talk value for money, and for that we need to get the big guns back out. This at 220 euros is about the same price as the X19.1, which in my view is the better of the two 19 options. It is slightly cheaper than both the Venom 
and the Mercurial if you get the Vapor. It's significantly cheaper than the Superfly. Well, that doesn't really answer the question. Is it good value for money? And the answer is that it is too expensive, but that's because football boots are too expensive at 220 euros. But comparing it to its peers, it's certainly worth considering in the same price point and the same bracket. You are not getting an inferior product in any way from this Furon V6 than if you were to buy a Vapor or an X or a Venom. My advice would be if you were to put those four boots out in front of me, try them all on and pick the one that fits your foot the best, the one you feel the best in. Not the best looking one, not the one that has a, a swoosh or has three stripes on it. Pick the one that fits you the best. So in those terms compared, it is reasonable value for money, although it's still very expensive because boots are expensive. In terms of sizing, I've gone for my regular size UK 8 and these fit me really perfectly. Go true to size, you will have no problems here at all. In terms of width, these are not super narrow, but they do have a narrower silhouette. I almost do want it to be slightly more and get a little bit of a better wrap from that fit weave on the medial side of my foot. I do feel like there might be a tiny bit of extra material there. But if you have a wide-ish foot, a somewhat wide foot, these should be fine for you. And as I say, with that extra volume on the instep that I don't love, you do get it a little bit in the toe box area as well. I feel like the whole boot could have done with maybe just a little bit of it taken out. It makes the boot more comfortable, but for what it is, which is a lightweight speed boot, I think it could have had a slimmer fit across my foot. But it is super soft and the breaking time for the upper is zero. I wouldn't say quite the same thing for the heel. Now, New Balance have taken some more inspiration from Adidas, I think, here, because you get that kind of triangular padded shape in the heel of the boot, which gives you really nice lockdown. But I do feel like there's potential for a blister or two there, unless you take what I said earlier and you go for the runner's loop. So the runner's loop basically involves looping the laces through the top two positions and then feeding the laces through one another. If you want to see me do a video on how to do a runner's loop, then please stick a like on this one and let me know in the comments and I'll do it with these boots. But as soon as I put a runner's loop in these, my heel's more locked in, the boot feels more locked in, and honestly, it's a hundred times better, and I'm really not worried about any slipping or blistering in the heel, because the heel area is quite hard. It's gonna take a little bit of softening up, but it helps the responsiveness. Finally, in terms of surface and stud pressure, I've not actually had any problems on either FG or AG with these, although this is definitely an FG layout. I don't really recommend it for AG. I think it's just a little bit too aggressive. But in terms of stud pressure, I've had no problems on either surface, and it's a really well-balanced layout, as you'd expect from that six in the front, four in the back stud setup. So on the whole, a boot not without its flaws, but a really fantastic product from New Balance, a huge step forward from what we got from the V5. And I actually think that New Balance have now positioned themselves to be a viable alternative to the Mercurial and the X. If you want a speed boot, this is worth looking at. Give it a try and you might find that this is the perfect speed boot for you. If you did enjoy the video and you do appreciate Boot Wizard always pushing to bring you these videos as quickly as possible, then please do support this video with a like. Remember to get subscribed so you get all of our fantastic future content, including some playtests and reviews of the brand new Under Armour boots, as well as the Vision and the Predator 20 Plus and 20.1 coming very soon. But that's all from Boot Wizard here today. 
a cracking job from New Balance. See you soon.